Amen. We're going to look this morning in the scriptures, uh, turning to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. One of, one of, I, I'm glad, I am glad, glad, glad the way the Word of God speaks to our hearts. Thank God for His Word. And I'm looking forward to preaching this this morning and sharing this scripture with you. And you'll find out from in, in, in certain parts of the message, I hope that it'll get to a point to where we have to say, oh me. Well, I, I certainly have in, uh, in getting this together as God laid upon our hearts, we've had to say, oh me, uh, a few times through this. So... Uh, it may. I hope. I hope it'll have that effect on you. Second Timothy chapter three and verse five. Second Timothy three and verse five. It says, "Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away." Now we're we're going to look at that word power today. But we're looking at it like this, the way that God has laid upon our hearts. And it's like this. Unused power. Unused power. Now, every one of us would, would enjoy having a power that we've seen in the Bible. I, I thought of individuals that's had power, and the first one that came to my mind was Elijah. Remember Elijah... He had power in prayer. In his prayer life, he had power, didn't he? He was able to pray, and it rained not for the span of three and a half years. And then you remember as he went up there onto the mountain, had his servant to go look out, and he prayed again. You remember he prayed again, and the rain fell. That's power. Amen. Then, then not only then, but you remember when he was up on Mount Carmel, and had the competition with the prophets of Baal. And remember, the prophets of Baal prayed a half the day and nothing happened. But Elijah prayed and the fire from heaven fell. Now, that's power. That man, and, and old Terry would like to have that power. I would. I'd love to have that type of power to be able to pray and something happened to be able to pray and something get done on the on, on to have that type of power but hey I, I, god wants us to preach this morning there's a lot of power there's power that you and i are not using that we have access to unused power i've I, I looked in the scripture and god laid upon our hearts over here and second corinthians we want to start right here second corinthians in chapter 12 the Apostle Paul, oh, he he came to realize he had power in something that that he you know he he realized he wasn't like Elijah. You remember when he had the thorn in the flesh? He prayed thrice, and uh, and uh, if he'd had the power Elijah had, well, well, that thorn would have been removed. It would have been gone. It would have not hurt him no more. Wouldn't have bothered him no more. But we realize uh, over here. 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 8 it says for this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me Hallelujah. church has unused power in the grace of God amen the grace of God brings power to you and I. And we don't use it like we ought to. Amen. We'll go through troubles and trials in this life. And we'll never turn to the grace of God. Oh, I'm glad for the grace of God. It'll bring power. Power into our lives. It'll bring, it'll bring power from places that we not don't realize where it comes from. But we'll realize once it comes, it has come from heaven. There's power in the grace of God. And we don't use it. Terry doesn't use it like I ought to. 
I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let my troubles and my trials get me down and discourage me and uh, run me down and oh, I sometimes can't even lift up my head. I'm so weak. But watch what the Apostle Paul said because of the power and the grace of God. He said, Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Hallelujah. There is power, unused power, church, in the grace of God. Watch, watch this. Oh, I'm telling you what a blessing. What a blessing. Romans 6 and verse 14 says, For, for sin shall not have dominion over you. <laughs> watch this. Let me read this right here. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. If you're having problem with sin, if you're having problem with sin having dominion over you, you're not using the power that God has given you. I'm telling you, thanks be unto God, because of the grace of God, sin hath not dominion over a child of God. Praise be unto God. Unused power. Don't let sin... Amen. Destroy you. But because of the grace of God, you have power. Power. Hallelujah. Look, watch this. What then shall we shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered ye. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Hallelujah. What a glorious blessing, church. I'm glad there's power. Hallelujah. In the grace of God to deliver us from the bondage of sin. To where sin doesn't have no dominion over you and I. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Ain't that a blessing? There's power, unused power in the grace of God. I like what the Apostle Paul said. He said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. <laughs> There's power. In the grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 1, the Apostle Paul. He begins to tell us about the importance of preaching. Amen. What we're doing here isn't in vain. Amen. There's power in preaching. Amen. I'm telling you, there's unused power today. Hey, man, people not willing to hear preaching, not willing to hear the preached Word of God. There's, oh, there's power in preaching. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 1, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, Declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. I'm glad, hallelujah, when I sit under preaching, when I begin to hear the preaching of the Word of God, it brings power. It'll bring power. And friend, I'm telling you, we need to have more preaching, not less preaching. Amen. We need to have preaching. Thank God. Heard a message preached one time, and it was this right here. The lack of preaching. And boy, he, he preached a good message, brought out of the, the, the individuals 
when a church ain't preached to, when individuals ain't preached to, the destruction and the turmoil and the trouble that they end up in. I'm telling you, there is power, unused power in pre We're not gathered today just in pain, but we're gathered today to hear from heaven, to hear, hallelujah, from the Word of God. Amen. And, and watch right here. Watch right here. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 and uh, verse 8, For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak, and ye are strong. This also we wish, even your perfection. Therefore I write these things, being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness, according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification, and not to destruction. There is the power of edification in the preaching of the Word of God. Hallelujah! I'm telling you, you can come to church feeling low, feeling down. But thanks God, thanks be unto God after the preaching of the Word of God, you feel lifted up. You feel encouraged. You're edified. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Woo! Thank God for the power. And friend, we need to not let it be unused power, but we need to receive power from the preaching of the word of god amen now let me let me slow down just for a minute because i want to explain something something that you already know and uh that's that's to do with uh that's to do with uh let, let's use this example there's a big tree a big strong tree beside of your house and the roots of it ex expand out grow out you've heard and i've heard i've i've heard brother randy i've heard of uh foundations being cracked by a tree root that's how that's how powerful they are brother clifford i know you have and i've heard of water lines being uh, severed, being burst by a root from a tree. Uh, there, there's been uh, water lines. They've been power, uh, uh, power lines that come into houses under the ground and that root spanned out and, and, and disrupt that power source. Well, God wanted me to share this with you. There's a lot of us got trees growing right beside of us. Trees growing right beside of us. And you know what kind of tree it is? It's a tree of bitterness. Amen. It's a tree of bitterness. And uh, it blocks hey, the tree of bitterness uh, over overcast us. And we can't get the sunlight. Hey, right now we like the shade of a tree. But friend, I'm telling you, when it blocks the goodness of God, when that shade blocks the Son of God, when that shade blocks the power of God from getting to us, we need to get rid of that tree. We need to get rid of that tree of bitterness because it's blocking. It's keeping power. It's keeping water. It's keeping... Hey, I'm telling you, we need to cut that tree down. Hey, man, we need to dig those roots of bitterness up and receive the power of God. Hey, man, unused power. Unused power. There's a tree of bitterness. I like what the Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12 and verse 14, it says, uh, follow, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness Bringing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Amen. We need to cut that tree of bitterness down. We need to dig that root of bitterness up. Hallelujah. And get access to the water of heaven. Get access to the power of heaven. Get access to the light of heaven. Amen. Unused power. It's unused because we're allowing it to be blocked 
by the root of bitterness. <clears throat> Amen. I like, I like what Ephesians, Ephesians uh, uh, chapter 4 says about that subject. <laughs> Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 says, It says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Hey, let me just throw this in there right quick. That root of bitterness grieves the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Keeps him, keeps it from getting to you. Blocks the way. Amen. Whereby you are sealed into the day of redemption. Ain't no wonder. Thanks be to God, we don't have no confidence in salvation. Hey, man, we don't have confidence in salvation because we've allowed the, the shade tree of bitterness. Hallelujah, to block the goodness of God from us. Therefore, we're unsecure. Hey, man, we're to move that tree of bitterness and be secure. No, that God is our Redeemer. Hey, man, what a blessing. Then he went on to say in verse 31, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. <laughs> Hallelujah. You remember, you remember Simon the sorcerer in the in the book of Acts, chapter 8. You remember when the apostle Paul, when the apostles came down and laid their hands upon the those that had been saved and they received the power of God, they received the Holy Ghost. What was Simon wanting to do? He's wanting to buy that power. <laughs> hey, I'm like what Peter said. Hey, Simon, you're in the you're in the gall of bitterness. He said, because you can't buy what God's given. Hey, man, what a blessing. We need to get rid of the bitterness. The, bit, the tree of bitters, it's big, it's looming, it's large. Its roots are devouring and discouraging. We need to get rid of it. <laughs> then you talk about having the power that Elijah had. Hallelujah, you'll have some power then when you get rid of that tree of bitterness, that root of bitterness. Now we want to preach, we want to preach. Hey, Amen, we want to preach a little while. Uh, Malachi. Malachi, and we're going to get to where the rubber meets the road right here. Amen. Going to get to where the rubber meets the road. There's two points God wants to make right here. Malachi chapter 3. We're going to share with you the power of the tithe. There's power in tithing unto God. Now, you might be new in the walk with God. Now, tithing is this. You make a paycheck. If it's a hundred dollars a week, a tithe is ten dollars. If you make a thousand dollars a week, a tithe is a hundred dollars. It's a tenth. And there's a there's power, unused power, in the tithe under the Lord. Now you say, well, preacher, how can there be power? Watch this right here, Malachi, three, and verse ten. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. <laughs> Woo! There's, there's power in the tithe. Amen. Not only that, watch this. And I will, in verse 11, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Hallelujah. There's power in that right there. And it's gone unused so much. So much. We think it's awful that God asks a tithe of us. Friend, He asks a tithe of us. There, there's a lot. There's a lot today says, no, the tithe ain't for today. The ones that's preaching that and teaching that, you know what they are? They're ones in that love the pleasures of this world. Oh yeah, they're the ones that's got the bass boat, the camper sitting in their driveway. Amen, and they can't afford to pay their tithe. Woo! Amen. You know I'm preaching the truth. Amen. And when the devourer comes, they have no protection over it. They have no protection over the devourer. They wonder why. They wonder why. But this happens, that happens. Amen, I'm telling you, 
There's a blessing to be had in the power of the tithe. There's power in tithing. Now, I'd, I'd stop right there if God let me, but He ain't going to let me because there's two parts. There's two parts to this. Where did He say bring the tithe to? Into the storehouse, into God's house, didn't He? That's what He said to do. He said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there, be, that there may be meat in mine house. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, church, I want, I want to share something with you. It's this right here. Hey, man, it's our responsibility what we do with that tithe that's brought into the storehouse. And right here, watch this power right here. Church after church after church after church in today's time are more interested in building up, building up, building up, having the biggest bank account they can, storing up, storing up, storing up, putting back, putting back, and never use it. Watch, watch, what the, watch this right here. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 38, it says, It says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give into your bosom? For with the same measure that ye meet with it shall be measured to you again. Amen. I'm telling you, when we as a church and we begin to we begin to hoard up, we begin to accumulate, build up that big bank account, and our missionaries are going without. Those that's hungry in our town are going without. Friend, I'm telling you, we'll never know the power of running over. <laughs> Woo! Hey man, we'll never know. I'm telling you, you'll never know. You'll never know the experience. Of, you've heard many times you can't outgive God. Hey, man, we'll never know that while we're hoarding up and gathering up and not distributing. I'm telling you, the tithe is to be distributed. It's to be put out there, put to use in the community, put to use in the missionary field, put to use, use in God's work. And when we do that, church, We'll know what the power of running over is all about. Woo! Amen. Good preaching, brother. Preach on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What a blessing. Good. Thank God. Now, now there's unused power. Preaching about unused power. That's pretty good right there. Amen. That's pretty good right there. I felt like that might have hit home. Amen. That might have hit home. But watch this right here. This will hit home too. Over here. And Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Verse 10. Thou hast eaten and art full. Then, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which He hath given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping His commandments and His judgments and His statutes which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwell therein. You see what's happening? God's people were in safety. They, were, they had full. They, their cupboards were full. Their plates were full. Everything was full. But watch, watch this right here. They, they had power. Unknown power. And it was in this right here. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up. And thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house 
of bondage who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought where there was no water who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint who fed thee in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to, thee, to do thee good at the latter end. And thou shalt, thou say in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. What'd they do? They took credit for where they was at. And you know what unused power they wasn't used? I'm telling you, there's power in rearing back, giving God glory. Giving Him glory for what you've got. Giving Him glory for where He's brought you from. Hey, man, there's power in that right there. But the, the children of Israel, they missed out on that power. What the, the latter part of that. He says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is He that giveth thee power to get well. Hey, man, did you catch that? When you remember the Lord thy God, he gives you power. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Oh, Lord, help Terry remember you. Help me, Lord, to remember you. Because I'm telling you, when I forget him, I'm weak. But when I remember him, hallelujah, there's power to be had. Woo! Amen. Amen. What a blessing. Now I, I want to close with this right here. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Thank God, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a feeling a touch from heaven. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah! Feeling a touch from heaven. Amen. Glory to God. I feel like Hallelujah. I moved that old tree of bitterness out of the way. Amen. Glory to God. Letting the water flow. Letting the power flow from heaven. Amen. Watch this right here now. Don't be so soon in giving up. Amen. Don't be so soon in giving up. Watch this over here in the book of Revelations. Hallelujah. There's no power in giving up. Nope. There's not. When you give up, there's no power. None whatsoever. But watch this right here. Revelations 2 and verse 26. says, And he that overcometh, now, thank God, thank God, there's power in overcoming. Unused power in overcoming when you give up. When you give up so quick, when we give up so soon, there's unused power that we could have had, that we could have been blessed by. He said, and he that overcometh and keep my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo! There's power to be had in overcoming. No matter what obstacle you're facing right now, church, Christians, there is power in overcoming. There's power to be had. But there'll be no power. He'll be wasted if you give up. Thank God don't give up. Don't give up. Thank God. Thank God. What a blessing. I like this. Watch this right here, and I'm done. Hallelujah. Philippians 3, verse 10. That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings, being made conformable unto His death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that, I, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank God there's unused power. Amen. When we, when we fail to press forward, 
when we fail to overcome, I'm telling you, thank God there's power, unused power that we can plug into, that we can have access to. And it'll give us that power to keep going on. <laughs> thank God, what a blessing. I'm glad we can keep going on, ain't you, church? Hey, man, we can keep going on. Because, glory to God, we, there'll be power, unused power given to us to keep pressing on. Hey, man, to press forward. What a blessing. What a blessing. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word here this morning. Thank you for your blessings, the beautiful weather. Now, God, we pray for your touch upon our church, upon your people. Lord, we want to plug into that unused power. God, we don't want to be without power. The world's too wicked. The world's too mighty. The devil is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And God, when we don't use the power that you have available for us, we'll be devoured. We'll be uh, trodden down. We'll be discouraged. We'll be whipped. But thank God, help us to plug in to that unused power. Hallelujah. We'll not be weak cleansed. We'll not be those that can't hold their head up. Woo! Or our hands up. Help us, mighty God, I pray, to move the bitterness and the things out of our way. God, that we can have access to the power that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I love you. See you Wednesday night, prayer meeting, 630. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.